Alright guys, VG Maniac 456 here, and welcome back to some more Wallace Brown Project Zoo. This is gonna be the last part, and this is gonna be post commentary, and this video is gonna be over what I missed throughout the actual Let's Play. So, yeah, I missed several tokens throughout this Let's Play. Uh, most of them were just well hidden, and a few I just missed in general. And they were just my accident that I never saw them, but eh, either way. Uh, the first one is underneath this stone bridge near the entrance of area 2 of the jungle house. So, look underneath that bridge, and you'll find a target, and hit it, so that way you can get a another token. Uh, this one is a cleverly hidden one. Uh, see this hut? It's a bit after when you saved that second elephant. It's on top of that hut. It's near the zip line too, if you want a better reference on that. So, yeah, it's like the first zip line in this area. So, yeah. Uh, the third one I mentioned earlier in, like, part two, I believe. And I mentioned that you can... That you needed a particular item, and that was the remote, to open that door. To get this last token. So, yeah. No matter what, I would have had to return over here anyways. Uh, something else I wanted to showcase is this. Which I kind of forgot in the regular let's play. The water effect is still there, but there's no water. It's very weird. But now, we're going to the mines, which I missed five tokens. Now, five of these tokens are pretty well hidden, as you might expect, but this one in particular was just Super Mario 64 as because you have to hit the... Uh, I, I don't know what you want to call that, I guess, great. And a token will appear. It'll also give you a shortcut back to the entrance if you really need it back, but I don't think you will need that. It's just something that you can use if you need that. Uh, the second one is in this particular area where there's a bunch of drills and a bunch of crates. Uh, it's on your way towards saving the beaver. In the crate, which I'm gonna hit right now, is where the token is located. So yeah, that one was cleverly hidden. I didn't think to check those crates. This one, I completely totally forgot. I was considering going looking behind these vaults of acid, but I always... I thought I never saw anything behind there except for balls. Proved me wrong, so yeah. There's a token right there, cleverly hidden. Uh, there's one hiding in the crates on floor 3, not too far from the elevator, so if you want a better reference, yeah, it's just near the elevator. Okay, so the final token. This one is really clever. Just push Y on this clock in machine and you'll activate gates. And yeah, this is a gate machine, well, gate um, mini game, much like the ones from my, well, the ones that we previously done. This is like the only gate uh, mini game that we have left. I missed this one entirely because how many people are gonna think, oh well, I can push Y on the clock in here, machine. So yeah, uh, three of them are on your way to the lift. The fourth one is on the second floor, and then the last one is on the bottom floor. Now here I was just forgetting where exactly it was, and Wallace winded up getting onto through the gate, which activated the whole coin to appear, which I didn't realize where it spawns, so yeah. But I decided to leave this in because weird sound effect again. Yeah, I play the water sound effect. I don't know why it does that, but yeah. Uh, the coin is located near the machine giant machinery that is uh, has the cage of the beaver, so, yeah. So, that is all of the mines. Now we're going to the lava caverns, five tokens. This one is, again, pretty cleverly hidden. Just destroy this little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but basically that thing, and you'll get a token. I forget what it's called. I, I guess it's chimney. Uh, on this burning bridge, it's the first one that you'll find along the way. Basically, uh, there is a coin nearby here, I decided to cut off, I mean, decided to cut this out of me finding those penguins for the most part. Yeah, there is a kind of have, a kind of hidden platform right there with a token holding it. So, yeah. Another token is right here. I don't think baby cage, but it makes things a little bit easier so that way you don't have to deal with the rocks, but this coin... Uh, yeah, I accidentally hit the 
bottom of the platform and somehow got the coin anyways. It's a weird collision detection, but there is a platform there, if you can even see it. Uh, in the second area of the level, this one is probably the hardest coin to get, and I decided to do it the cheap way, something that I accidentally did to the previous token. Uh, you're supposed to go to one platform and then get on top of the elevator shaft thing, but it's extremely difficult, and I don't think I've ever done it that way, so yeah, it's easier just to be what I did right there. Uh, the last token of this area is underneath this wooden bridge in Area 3. So yeah, I missed this one entirely. I thought there was something near the underneath the bridge, but I just didn't check uh, far enough. So yeah, Kabakazi! I decided to do that for fun. Uh, the next area is warehouse. Six tokens missed. Uh, this one is on top of the blue crate thing near the beginning. So yeah, use that lift, and you'll get you know, one token. Now the second token of this area is basically, well, sort of nearby. Nearby that one token that we just got, we go into this door and jump on this pool and do a high jump and some soul and there you go. You get another token. Nicely hidden because I never saw that. This one is cryptic. For years I didn't know these things actually had a purpose. You can destroy them with a turn point. So yeah, there are ten of them across this level well, across this area, so I decided to just transition where they were. So just follow where I'm at, where I'm at and just destroy them. I don't know why in the world they didn't give you a better indicator that you can destroy them, but you can. I don't know, I guess because you had the terminal turn up launcher and you're like, Oh, I want to see how much stuff I can destroy. I guess they're expecting you to do that, but I didn't follow that. For years, I just didn't think, hey, I can destroy them, and then I just somehow... Then I discovered, hey, I can do it. Of course, I'm running out of turnips because of all this, but hey. Uh, this one is near the porch uh, door, by the way, if you probably couldn't tell with those platforms that Wallace has to bring up. The next... Uh, of course, the next one is near these... is nearby the same kind of area. So that's convenient. Uh, the last one is actually um, not so convenient. You actually have to go up here. I think I might have actually showcased this, but yeah, there's a barrel up here, and then you can destroy it. And the coin appears in that uh, sort of gauntlet room area thing, so with the lever. lever. But yeah, that's uh, one more token. Now, this is stupid. That coin up there has always glitched up on me. I tried doing it on a... I tried checking around the area off camera and it didn't appear. And then it didn't appear when I did it on the first time so I had to replay the level again. Uh, this area actually holds two coins and they're both kind of cryptic again. Uh, you'll notice that that final cabinet thing I actually could destroy or bend rather. You have to destroy them all in this particular area. Uh, the second one is even more cryptic than that. I mean, seriously, could it have heard to actually? Would it have heard to actually put some kind of indicator that you can actually that there is some purpose to destroying those? <sighs> Whatever. Uh, I decided to leave most of this in because, well, I didn't know what else to do. I mean, seriously, transition all the fights and such. I didn't really want to do that. But uh, yeah, either way. And just destroy the catapult things. And then, uh, then we get to one of the tokens that I was talking about. The other one, anyways. Uh, yeah, you have to push that bookcase. And then you'll actually get, uh, or the bookshelf, rather, and you'll get a token. How anyone is supposed to know that? Again, I don't know. It's so cryptic. And there we go. Uh, this coin has also glitched me up on one practice when I was exploring around to make sure, and yes, there's 29 because this was the recording session when that one coin above the pipe actually glitched up and didn't appear, so yeah. The last uh, level, the ice house. This one took me a while to figure out where exactly it was. It's right here. Yeah, it's underneath the snow, so there was a second coin hiding underneath the snow. This one is kind of annoying. First off, you need the, uh, 
the remote so that way you can activate the platforms, but then you also need to, well, hit the targets. There are three targets around this area, and if you hit all three, then you get a token. The problem is, is that the platform did not want to cooperate with me, so I missed, so I kept missing that target, so transition to back at the beginning area, which made things a lot easier for me to actually hit the targets. And yes, there is a switch up there, and I'll be getting into that just in a little bit. First, let's grab our token. And then we're gonna hit the switch, and then that will also activate a coin location, or rather spawn it a coin. Before I fall down, anyways. <laughs> you didn't see that, totally not. And yeah, sped around a little bit like that, and then... I guess maybe you could have just simply fell down to make things go a little faster, but I decided, nah, we're gonna find the platform. So, um... Yeah, grab that coin. Doesn't give me the animation, but whatever. And now, to the second area. I mentioned that these targets didn't do anything. In reality, they do. There's just no indicator. In fact, I was one off from actually destroying them or getting the coin to spawn. So yeah, that was a little annoying. And yes, I swear the coin just disappeared for no reason, but it was actually in the, uh, the porridge box. So that's one coin in this area. Now the second one... It, now the last two are switch ones. This one took me a while to do because of, well, it's annoying to get out and in to get the switch. So yeah. So as you can tell, this one I just had loads of practice on. I just kept doing it over and over and over again. Because it was just a pain in the neck to grab. But uh, yeah, it's on the platform near the catapult, which I destroyed right now. So, yeah, it's near the, the switch is near the entrance. There is another switch, by the way, that will spawn a coin, which I mentioned. So, yeah, that's the 29th coin. Now, the 30th coin. The 30th coin is actually, well, right here. It's right there. It's on the spawning point, and then we'll go right up there. And we'll see what's up. And soon as we go through some platforming. Oh yeah, by the way, yes, that uh, our logo thing, that's just telling you that you're replaying the level. It's a little weird, but yeah, that's what it uh, says. You can't get rid of either. And there's the message that you can get whenever you unlock a new movie clip. And the last golden tool, there's two ways to do it. You can either go through the level normally, or you can just simply do what I did, and just bed run and grab the tool that way. And that does it. That's it. That's all of uh, Wallace Gromit and Project Zoo. That is 100% done. Now, the thing about this game is that your reward is kind of, well, maybe not too rewarding. Basically, all like I mentioned before, those tokens just give you uh, bits and pieces of the Wallace Gromit cartoon, like show thing known as the wrong trousers and it's just basically bits and pieces it's not the whole thing but then you also get the a short whenever you get 100 percent and that's the snoozatron again not really that rewarding at all especially after all that effort that you did to get all the golden to well golden tokens yeah the golden tools and the tokens i mean seriously it is a big it's big pain in the neck <sighs> but, uh, yeah, so, that actually does it, that that really does it, and I don't really have much else to say, I mean, I enjoyed doing this Let's Play, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this Let's Play, it was a blast to do, and, you know, I really like replaying through this game over and over again, it's one of those games that I just don't mind replaying, I don't know why, it's just, so yeah, I don't really mind replaying through this game, so, I that felt, and plus, since my game seems to be old, I don't know, that could be just me, but, you know, there was a lot of glitches that I never encountered before. Tokens not appearing, uh, textures not loading, well, then again, a lot of that stuff just, I don't know. But, uh, I think the note is, what am I gonna do after this? Well, that's actually gonna be, uh, the Walls of Grom Project Zoo... 2010 recordings that I did, and there will be a compilation of that. I have that already, so after this video, uh, there should be 
a video after this, just going over the whole Wallace Garden Project Zoo and how my, how, you know, a compilation, it was, it's about over 20 minutes long, and, yeah, there, it's just basically trimmed up and all set and ready to go to upload onto YouTube. So, I guess you can enjoy listening to that if you really want to, <laughs> uh, but, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do after that, uh, Let's Play or VGOST, I don't know, but I can note one thing, Smash Brothers, Pokemon, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire, Mario Kart 8 DLC, uh, a lot of other games, and a lot of other stuff, you know, games that I have right now, they're, I basically am kind of busy with the library of stuff that I have right now, but maybe I can do a Let's Play of a game within my backlog, I don't know. So, yeah, I guess I'll end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you all later when whatever that will be. This has been BG Maniac 456. Signing out.